Well, 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 Okay, what's going on? I don't even know. You don't know what's, what's going, going on? on? Is he breathing? Oh my god. My husband's my, 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 my dead. Okay, is that your husband? My husband's freaking out, yes. Yeah, okay. I don't want my daughter. Oh, look at this guy outside. Ma'am. He's on the floor. There's blood everywhere. Oh my god, he has a little bit of a in the back of his head. What is your name? My name is Sherry Kinney. Sherry. You don't see a gun? No, I don't see a gun. Okay. Listen, I need you and your husband to back out of the residence and wait outside for the officers. Do you okay. hear me? All right. In May 2017, police in the small quiet town of Bel Air, Ohio, find a man dead in his basement, a gunshot wound to the head when police arrive on the scene. They meet with the husband and wife that had found the deceased man David Kinney and his wife Jerry, a longtime friends of the victim 43-year-old Brad McGarry. I can't more believe that. How long you guys been looking? Eight, nine years. Oh, yeah. My kids call him uncle. He's supposed to go to the Bahamas with us in August. Best he, buds, I think. Yeah. yeah, he's one of my best friends. He met him in coal mining classes years ago, and we <laughs> just took him and his family. I'm trying not to freak out. I'm That's sorry. Right. I, I can't not see him, man. I'm not supposed to see that, man. What you doing, Mr. Kenny? How you coming about coming out here? That right there, the weed eater is the whole plant. Okay. The weed eater, the weed eater? Yes, sir. We come in the basement door and knock. Because my daughter knocked on the front door. I told her, I said, sis, go knock on the back door. She went up and knocked on the back door. The door was open. I went up right behind her. I noticed that the kitchen was scattered. There was stuff all over. But I told my wife, I said, Cherry, something's wrong. When the police look in the basement, they find the body of Brad McGarry lying face down on the floor with a pool of blood around his head. Brad McGarry was an openly gay man in a small conservative neighborhood, his friends state that he had just ended a relationship with a man named Scotty, but they didn't know his last name. Brad, they stayed with, with him, like an issue with him. He's the last relationship he was in, it was pulled off and he hasn't been with anybody ever since. It was the well, girl. Yeah, it was, it was, it was the, the guy. guy. While looking around the house police noticed that it appears to have been ransacked oddly enough they noticed that nothing has actually been taken, there were multiple newer phones lying. Around a large TV and even money on the floor, police are convinced that the robbery was staged the next thought is that it was suicide. When the coroner arrives he starts taking a look at Brad's body, it is apparent that there is a gunshot wound to the head, so he asks if there was a gun found anywhere, but no gun was found. Since oftentimes suicide victims fall on top of the gun after committing the act police roll the body over, but they still do not find a gun. I don't see a firearm. No, I don't either. They flipped him over, they didn't see a gun. That's the case. It wasn't no suicide. He's a rigger. Who found him? Uh, people Kenny. outside. David Kenny. Detectives begin interviewing friends and family of Brad right away, trying to form a timeline and gain as much information as possible. As to who may have done this after getting the full name of Scotty Butler Brad's recently ex-boyfriend, they head to his house right away. To interrogate him when detectives arrive at the house his mother answers the door and states that Scotty has been in jail for the past. Three months for violating his probation, Scotty Butler is no longer a suspect as he had a solid alibi detectives decide to take a look around. A neighborhood to see if there are any cameras filming towards Brad's house thankfully one neighbor had a camera that faced towards the street. Near Brad's house, they would be able to see who came and went from the house, while reviewing the camera footage they continued to interview friends. And family David had taken some pictures and screenshots that could help detectives in the investigation, so they took his phone to copy the information. The issue the detective is having at this moment is that just the night before Brad's cousin said something that completely changed the direction of the investigation. Sunday, we went to Grammy's. We were sitting around the table, it was just me and Brad and Heather, which is another cousin of mine, and he made a comment how this DJ guy, he was coming over. Brad's intent was it was romantic. He made a joke about taking a nap. 
and it wasn't taking a nap. It, he was insinuating that they were having sex. It was like quotation marks. This was Sunday. This was Sunday. The day he was killed. Yes. What time did he leave? Between one thirty and two. Really? Yes. Oh, he was supposed to. Heard that. He was dropping all the tuxes off. I also know that he was married. Who told you that? Uh, Brad did. Brad told you. Yeah. She, being the wife, didn't know all this time. They've been doing this for years. From what I understand, the two of them, Brad and DJ, kind of, I don't know if they laid low or they completely broke up. I guess they call him DJ or David Kenny. Really? Yes. The only I guy. Because it's the only guy he's ever told me about. It's just, it's the guy. That's him. The guy. That's him. The detectives made David believe they took his phone for the pictures he had, but the truth was they were tracking where his phone was when Brad was murdered as well as finding proof that him and Brad had a relationship beyond friends when they took a look at his phone. Even though he has deleted everything they are able to see the text messages between David and Brad evidence shows that they were. In fact in a sexual relationship they review the phone history and find that David's phone was directly at Brad's house at the time of the murder. They also discover while reviewing the neighbor's CCTV footage that David had driven to Brat's right before the murder in his wife's car, then left 40 minutes later. David would then appear again hours later in his truck with his family, delivering the weed eater Brad supposedly wanted to borrow police know that David was there when Brad was killed now they need to work to get the truth out of David. Where's your phone point you at Brad's house the time to get killed? The past three. I was not there. there. You were at his house. Yes, sir. I'm the murderer. Oh, oh there. God. You know exactly when he was killed. Yes, sir, I know. You were there when he was killed. No, sir, I was not at his house when that man was murdered. Sir, sir I can't. This is the kind of shit that gets people in trouble. Oh, my God, I know. We're going to lose everything. Lose your wife, lose your kids. We're coming. This don't have to be the end of your life. I've got a chance to come clean and tell you all the other shit. Okay. We'll do this together. Tell me what happened. He sure don't. He had another guy with him. I don't know who he was. I don't know his name. I swear on everything. Just pulling her car. What happened next? He went in the garage. It's okay. Doing this job for many years the detective knows that people subconsciously hide their face when lying especially from police. The police also know that Brad's SUV was still at the house and had not left since Brad was killed, so this version of David's story is a lie. We got to the house. Um, I'm telling you to go out on the streets of love. There was another man there. I, I swear to you, go out to you. I do not know his name. I do not know his name. Okay. You did kind of have a little bit of an argument with the He shot Brad in front of you? Yes, sir. Right. And he was going to shoot me. But I got scared. I don't know what to do. And then I left. Oh. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Oh, it's okay. He knew. He knew what I looked like. He, he, he I, my vehicle was there. I did what not gun? know what to do. What kind of gun was it? I have no clue. Why did you call the cops? Why did you do this elaborate story? Why did you put you put your own daughter in that basement with that boss? You did that. Yes, sir. And you knew he was down there. She. Damn it. Put screw in your family. Sir, I am... Tell me what happened. I did not kill him. You knew Brad was dead? Did he brought your I did not know he was dead. The detective now creates a false story to help David become more comfortable with opening up about what happened. 
even though the detective knows David will lie again he also knows that the truth is getting closer. I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes when magic happens, people panic. Okay? I got a theory. I think it might have been an accident. I think that maybe somebody was f***ing around and accidentally shot him. I panicked. Didn't think anybody believed him. Was it an accident? Am I right? Drop, drop all this shit and just let it out. You, Brad deserves it. Brad's family deserves it. Your wife deserves it. Your kids deserve it. Brad doesn't want me to leave my wife for a while. I love my wife and kids to death. You love Brad too? I do, I do. Mean, and sometimes you think about leaving your wife for him? Okay. I told him the time, man. I'm not going to leave my wife. Kid me smacked me around a couple times. He said, if you end all of this now, then I'm, I'm done with you forever. Got real loud with me. Got you know, kind of like up in my face. He had a... One of those little derringers. Cross the line, man. It's done. Look at me. Let it go. Tell me what happened next. He had it in his hand. Just kind of like waving at me, you know what I mean? Okay. Telling me, you know, you're f up. I'm tired of you. I can't believe you f up my emotions this long and just to call it quits. He kept waving at me, so I grabbed it. Okay. What happened after you grabbed it? I pushed him. After this statement David stops talking and asks for a lawyer, and even though he says he shot Brad, he will go to court pleading not guilty. In February 2018 David was convicted of aggravated murder with a gun specification. If this man was able to do a assassin's job to someone he loved and his best friend, what could he do to his enemy? or someone who opposed him. Kinney, for his part, did offer a brief apology in court, although he made neither an admission nor did he offer an explanation. I would like to apologize to the Gary family for all the hurt and pain that I put you through and prevent for any of this to happen, and I wish you could all, I could take it all back. I know all the apologies in the world will never bring him back, but I want you to know I truly am sorry for it all. The defendant shall serve life in prison without the possibility of parole, plus three years beyond life in prison records indicate that David remains incarcerated at the Belmont Correctional Institution in St. Clairsville, Ohio.